welcome to another Wordy Nerd. This is Cookie, and it is officially Friday, so you know what that means. It's Fun Friday. That's right, you heard me right. Uh, today we're going to create a painting, and I call these my poppy paintings, and they're just these cute stylized flowers that literally anyone can do. Any age, anyone, anyone can do these. So if you're feeling shy, nervous, or hesitant, as to if you can even paint. These are great to start learning off of. They get you used to the material and you have fun and get something really cool out of it. And so if you're interested in making something like this, we are going to learn what materials you're going to need, how to use them, and I'm actually going to show you how to create this painting from start to finish. So if you're ready, Get your seat belts on, buckle in, and let's go. I'm going to add some of the orange to our palette. Make sure you close the lid. Uh, acrylic is essentially liquid plastic. So whenever it's dried out, you're just going to get a giant glob of plastic. So you want to always make sure the lid is on. So for the first stage, all you have to do is imagine a shape. So you can do a square, a rectangle, circle. You can fill the page if you want. Um, I tend to like squares, so I'm going to make a square. And I'm just going to make a shape of some sort and go ahead and fill it in. So I'm going to... And I want this to be hand-drawn looking, so I don't want a machined perfection. If you do, go ahead, grab a ruler, and then measure that first, and then start painting. I just believe in jumping right in, so I'm jumping right in. This is sort of hard working at this angle, but we will get used to it. And then just start filling it in. So you can experiment with your brush strokes. So you could do quick, 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 quick. Or what do the longer, smoother ones do? Uh, these paintings are just meant to be fun. They're not masterpieces, but they might be masterpieces to you. But they're just, I call them the little doodle sketches. Just nice paintings to relax you and to get some ideas out. And they look really great when they're all clustered together. Magically, our painting has dried and you're ready to begin the actual drawing. I call these my poppies and they're flowers that are just super simplistic to make but you can get really decorative with them which is one of the things I think is the funnest about this project. Uh, so we have our dried piece of paper now and has our really nice color on it, whatever color you've chosen. And my pen of choice is going to be the Sharpie just because I'm going to want a nice solid line. I usually start by just reinforcing the frame. And again, it's supposed to look hand drawn, not machined, so allow for some natural variations. All right, so I have my border that every action is going to be happening in here. So what I'm going to want to do now is to actually build my poppies. And I do this, and I'll just start with one, I just make a circle. And just, you know, make another circle. And it looks super simplistic at this stage. Maybe there's going to be extra little pods in there. And then I can draw my stem. Sometimes I do that at the end so then everything lines up. But I just wanted you to get a sense of how this one looks. And really simple. You can do a little base of your plant like that. So he, in the Bob Ross style, is awfully lonely. So he needs some friends. So let's, let's make him some friends. And use your imagination. Maybe some of them are larger and maybe one of them's taller but has three openings. And a fourth. And maybe these two are clustered together. And this one's by himself. Now you can experiment with 
the actual green part of your plant so you don't have to stick to the traditional. Maybe this one's going to be pointier. So we're getting our garden as we go. And I usually do a cluster on one side and a couple on the other to give a sort of balance. Um, this one has even numbers, so I'm going to do odd number over here to keep it interesting. I'll do another large one because we're going to want to have a focus. And he's going to look like that. And we'll draw the stem in after. Use your imagination. Just have fun. What happens if you do squares or triangles or other shapes there? Um, anything goes, really. Let's get the land in. And then I'm going to draw it to the ground. This one I'm going to have a little bit larger, but I'm going to off-center it just slightly. And keeping with our theme before, these two are going to be co-joined and we'll put the smaller stems on these. You can see I'm doing like little bow ties. So nothing, nothing extraordinarily fancy with these. These are just circles to build shapes and now all those circles we get flowers. So it's quite simple. Uh, next stage is we're going to grab some white. Uh, I have unbleached titanium. I'd rather not use that. It's more of a gray. As you can see it's more creamy. Um, I'm looking for a brighter white, so let me grab from my magic bin. There we go. Just a nice, cheap, plain white. Alright, so we get our plain, cheap, bright white and go ahead and add it into our palette. If you see some of that clear goo come out beforehand, that's called the vehicle. And the vehicle is a compound that actually helps your paint stay together and remember this was plastic so we don't want to turn into plastic so it keeps it in that elastic state. I'm going to grab another brush so if it comes out like that just stir it in all together it's okay it just separated a little bit. Um, older paint tends to do that and that is an old tube of paint. So for this let me slide this over. When I mix if I'm going to want details I'm going to sort of load the brush and then clean it off just a little bit because otherwise if I do that you can see the point is really gloopy and that's not going to be good. So I load and then I clean it off just a little bit. So once you get some paint on there you can start filling in the gaps. So you need to figure out is the center of the flower is going to be the orange of the paper or is that going to be the white or vice versa. Uh, in this case, I'm going to imitate my other ones and just paint it in. You can see it's, it's faint because it's a pretty strong pigment. So if you need more, add it. Or the orange is a stronger pigment, rather. And we're just going to basically fill in the gaps. This is like a color by number now, except you have designed it. How cool is that? Now you can design anything. Fill in the stems. That's a little messy there. If you mess like that, don't worry. Just push it off. It's okay. Push it back in. Maybe you do it twice because you're painting on an angle like I am. Um, I usually work with paper towels beside me. Another thing that helps is if you're having trouble spinning your paper and then it's going to help you get the curve that you want. And as I f do the little finishing touches here, what, what else are you looking for to do on our fun Fridays? Um, is there a special project that you would have in mind that you have either no idea how to do or adversely that you think people would enjoy as well. Um, let me know. We can even start a Flickr group if you guys want and then you can upload what you've done there to actually share with the others. Um, I think that would be a lot of fun to see what everyone's doing. So I'm going to do that. I'll start a Flickr group for us and I will put the link in the doobly-doo below and then that way when you're finished you can show us what you've done. So this is our poppies. So what sort of flowers have you come up with? 
let me know. Uh, we'll post it on the Flickr and then you can see what everyone is doing. Um, so for the weekend, um, try try this. Have, have some fun. Grab some paper, see what canvas is like. Get a tube or three or four of acrylic paint and a marker and just see what you can do. You can also, let me switch this out, do the drawing first and then add some color and then you'll have a polychromatic piece. Polychrome means many color. What we were just working on was monochrome. Mono meaning one, so just one color. So you could have a monochromatic piece or you could have a polychromatic piece. It is completely up to you. All right, and so hopefully you got a really, really awesome painting out of that and that you'll be able to create some more using that technique. Work then. And let's see, let's see, our true and false. Hmm, our true and false. True or false, my favorite medium in art is painting. Is it? If not, what is it? What's your favorite medium? Let's go with that one also. So we have a two for one there. So let me know what you think. Is that my favorite? Or, you know, is it something else? And let me know what you like to do, if anything. Uh, also, let me know if there's anything you want to see on a fun Friday in the future. So photography, printmaking, jewelry making, I don't know, Fimo, we can get Fimo clay and make little hobbits, which I used to do once upon a time. So pretty much the sky's the limit. Like I said, I think I'm gonna go with random. Random could be fun for these. So true or false, let me know if that was a true statement or false. And I will see you next time. <laughs>